this thing? Well, I think first I have to answer, why does this thing even exist and why do I have it? 2011 or so, I had just finished music school. I was trying to figure out my career. I wanted to be a session bass player. That was my goal. I wanted to record records. I wanted to go on tour with cool bands. I didn't really know how to do that. I was living in Atlanta at the time. I decided to visit Los Angeles. I was thinking about moving there. And while I was there, I decided I would try and get some advice from somebody that really knew. I got a lesson with Sean Hurley. If you don't know who Sean Hurley is, you've definitely heard him before. He's the real deal. He's one of the A-list session bass players of the world. He's recorded all kinds of incredible music. So definitely check him out if you haven't. The way this came to be was a couple years before, 2009 or so, I went and saw David Ryan Harris at a show in Atlanta at the Vinyl. Absolutely in incredible, absolutely incredible musician and songwriter. Uh, one of my favorites. And after the show, I got to meet Sean and he was very cool and we talked for a while. So fast forward a couple years, it's 2011. I sent Sean a message and asked him, is there any way I could get a private lesson while I'm in town? And he said yes. And man, I am so grateful that he did. I think that hour or so was probably the most beneficial, jam-packed hour of practical music education I have ever received. So, Sean, I don't know if you remember me or uh, if you'll ever see this, but thank you so much for taking the time to help out a young musician and give me some advice. One of the pieces of advice that he shared with me was to get an old P bass. I took his advice. I saved up. I bought the 60s P bass. And to Sean's credit, he was right. This is probably the best investment that I've ever made in terms of music stuff. I love this bass. Sean was right. It was a good investment. But as a young musician, I didn't have a lot of money. I had just saved up for this. So I had a hard time with his second piece of advice, which was to get a semi hollow bass. If you aren't familiar with a semi hollow, a semi hollow is a bass that has a solid center block in the middle here, and then the sides are chambered. So it kind of has some of the hollow vibe, but the pickup is mounted on a solid block of wood. So it has some of the tonal properties of something like a Fender, a solid body instrument. They're undeniably cool. They have a really beautiful sound to them. I find that they work particularly well with acoustic sort of arrangements but they can sound good on all kinds of things. Like if you throw some fuzz on a semi hollow, it can be pretty cool. Uh, in fact, my band is dropping a single right now in which I play this bass with some fuzz. And if you wanna hear it, I'll post the link down below. But yeah, Sean was, Sean turned me on to the semi hollow bass and encouraged me to get one. And Sean had this, oh my gosh, one of the coolest basses I've ever played. It was this old 60s Guild Starfire. Man, what a cool bass. Those things are beautiful and iconic and sound so cool. And I really wanted one, but it just wasn't in the cards. I just saved up and bought a P bass and I just couldn't afford it. I fell in love with Sean's Guild Starfire and I wanted that sound. And also, man, how cool is this? A couple months after that private lesson, John Mayer released the Born and Raised record, which Sean played bass on. And I love that record. And what's wild is all of the basses that Sean let me play in that private lesson were the basses that he used to record that record. That was such a cool experience. So I wanted that sound. I wanted to get that Guild Starfire sound. I wanted to get that semi-hollow short scale bass with a bisonic pickup close to the neck sound. That's what I was looking for. But I didn't have a lot of money. So what is this? Well, maybe some of you have already figured this out. This was an Alan Woody Rumble Cat. I bought it used for $200 off Craigslist. There's nothing wrong with that bass. In fact, I'm gonna put a link to that bass 
in the description if you want to check it out. And they're fun little bases. They come with two mini humbuckers. I, w I wanted something different. I wanted that Bisonic. Enter Curtis Novak. If you aren't familiar with Curtis Novak, he hand winds amazing pickups. I'm not endorsed by him. I'm not affiliated with him in any way. I just genuinely think that company makes great pickups. I love the way those pickups sound. And he makes a Bisonic pickup, hand wound, and I bought one. I think it was 250 bucks. Maybe they're 300 now. So actually the pickup is more than the base. And uh, this is basically my poor man's Guild Starfire. When I got the components, I was like, man, let's just go for it. I got, I stripped it down to the bare wood. Actually, my dad helped me refinish this base. Uh, I changed pretty much everything on this base. I, I changed the tuning pegs out. I changed the pickups, the knobs, all the components. I should say too, I got some help with the routing because I didn't know how to route from a local luthier, Jeff Aperio from Aperio Guitars. He helped me install this Bisonic pickup. And this is like a weird Franken bass, but what's crazy is it worked. It was my version of trying to get a sound that I couldn't afford, I couldn't get my hands on. Uh, but because I bought this thing and tinkered with it, I learned so much about instruments and how they work and building them. And I got to spend time with my dad who helped me refinish it. And it's just cool that this thing came to be. So what are some takeaways for you? I would say, don't sleep on the semi hollow basses, man. They can be the perfect vibe for some songs, especially acoustic sort of songs, but they can sound awesome with fuzz. They're kind of a secret weapon. Out of every 10 songs that I record, I would say one or two of those songs, I'm using the semi hollow bass. It punches well outside of its weight class, and they're really handy to have around, and they're fun to play. In fact, I'm gonna put some links to some of my favorite semi hollow bases in the description if you wanna check those out. Those are affiliate links, so I do get a small commission if you do get something, but I genuinely think they're cool. Another thing is don't be afraid to try some things with your instruments, uh, and don't hear me wrong, if you have something like an old P bass, please don't disassemble and change things out on those. In fact, there's a whole story with this one. If you wanna hear the story about this bass, let me know. If you have something that's affordable and that there's a lot of them, you don't have to be afraid to change the pickups out. In fact, if there's one thing that you can do to a bass that's gonna make a huge difference on the way that it performs and the way that it sounds, it's changing out the pickups. You can get a cheap bass like this one and put a really nice pickup in it and it's gonna punch outside of its weight class. And you don't have to be afraid to try and do it yourself. You just need a soldering iron and some basic tools and it's really fun. And I think it's something, learning to work on your own instruments and modify your own instruments, I think is a good use of time. You're gonna feel more connected with your instruments. And then also if something goes wrong, you're gonna be equipped to be able to fix it, which is a good thing to have. So there's a few ways you can help this channel out. One is I have a bass course. Uh, it's about a two and a half hour course where I teach you how to play bass. And I genuinely think it's a good course. So the link to that's in the description. I also have a course specifically for guitar players that are interested in learning playing bass. I did a collaboration with my friend Rhett Scholl. We, we made that course together. But basically, I kind of teach him, who's a great guitar player, some tips on how to play bass and not sound like a guitar player. So if you're a bass curious guitar player, the link to that is in the description as well. I also have merch now, so if you want to support the channel, that's a great way to support the channel, and it's fun. I just love talking about bass. I love hanging out with you and making these videos. I know this one was a little different. This was like a story video. I really like stories, so if you want more of this, let me know. I'd love to tell you a story about this P-Bass and how it came to be. So thanks for watching and hanging out, and I'll see you on the next video. Penny, I'm, I'm trying to record right now, sweetheart. Oh. No, go. I love you so much, but this is bad timing. Go upstairs.